Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this fixed beam by Macaulay's method. In this beam, we have to draw the shear force diagram and a bending moment diagram. Also, we have to find the maximum deflection. The value of EI is given as 8000 kilonewton meter square. In this beam, there are two point loads, 18 kilonewton and 9 kilonewton. The load 18 kilonewton is acting at a distance of 2 meter from the point A. The load 9 kilonewton is acting at a distance of 4 meter from the point A. The total length of the beam is 6 meter. We know that in the fixed beam, in both of the ends, we have the moments. In the point A, we have the moment MA and in the point B, we have the moment MB. Also, we have the vertical reactions. In the point A, we have the reaction RA and in the point B, we have the reaction RB. Now, we have to make sections in this beam. In this beam, there are three different parts AC, CD and DB. So, we have to make three sections, one section in AC, one section in CD and one section in DB. You can see that I have made three sections, one section in AC, one section in CD and one section in DB. I have made all of the sections at the distance of x from the point B. Now let us find the moments about the sections. We are going to find the moments from the point B. In this case, we are moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. Let us assume that MB is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. RB is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is x. The point load 9 is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For this load we have to take this distance. This distance is x minus 2. The load 18 kN is also acting in the clockwise direction so it is also negative. For the distance, we have to take this distance. This distance is x minus 4. These two terms are only applicable from the point B and up to the point D. So for BD, both of them are applicable. From the point B and up to the point C, we have to consider these three terms. From the point B, and up to the point A, we have to consider all of the terms. So we have to split them with the dotted lines. Now let us equate mxx with ea d square y upon dx square. Let us integrate this equation on both of the sides. When we integrate d square y upon dx square, we will get dy upon dx. For integrating these two terms, we can use this formula and for integrating these two terms, we can use this formula. When we integrate minus mb, we will get minus mbx. When we integrate x, we will get x square upon 2. When we integrate x minus 2, we will get x minus 2 the whole square upon 2. When we integrate x minus 4, we will get x minus 4 the whole square upon 2. C1 is the constant, 9 upon 2 we will get 4.5, 18 upon 2 we will get 9. Now let us integrate this equation again. When we integrate dy upon dx we will get y. When we integrate x we will get x square upon 2. When we integrate x square we will get x cube upon 3. When we integrate c1 we will get c1x. C2 is the new constant. When we integrate x minus 2 the whole square, we will get x minus 2 the whole cube upon 3. When we integrate x minus 4 the whole square, we will get x minus 4 the whole power cube upon 3. 2 into 3, we will get 6. 4.5 upon 3, we will get 
9 upon 3, we will get 3. We know that in the fixed E and B, there will be no slope and a deflection. So, when x is 0, the slope dy upon dx will be 0 and the deflection y will be 0. In the point A also, we have a fixed support. So, when x is 6, the slope dy upon dx will be 0 and the deflection y will be 0. We know that when x is 0, dy upon dx will be 0. In this equation, let us apply both of them. When we apply, we should not consider these two terms because this term is only applicable beyond the point D and this term is only applicable beyond the point C. So, we should not consider both of them. When we apply this here, we will get C1 which is 0. Also, we know that when x is 0, y will be 0. In this equation, let us apply both of them. Here also, we should not consider these. Finally, for C2, we will get 0. In the slope equation, let us apply the values of C1 and C2. When we do that, we will get this equation. In the deflection equation also, let us apply the values of C1 and C2. When we do that, we will get this equation. We know that when x is 6 meter, dy upon dx will be 0. In this equation, let us apply both of them. Now, we have to consider these two. You can see that I have considered both of them. Finally, we will get this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 1. Also, we know that when x is 6 meter, y will be 0. In this equation, let us apply both of them. Finally, we will get this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 2. Now, let us take a calculator and solve these two equations. If you do not know how to solve two equations in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator. For MB, I have got 16 and for RB, I have got 11.333 kN. In the slope equation, let us apply the values of MB and RB so that we will get this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 3. In the deflection equation also, let us apply the values of MB and RB. When we do that, we will get this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 4. Now, we are going to find the maximum deflection. The maximum deflection will occur between the points C and D. So, when we find the maximum deflection, we should not consider these two terms because these two terms are only applicable beyond the point C. We know that when the deflection is maximum, the slope will be 0. Let us take the slope equation and equate that to 0. We know that when we do that, we should not consider this. After simplifying, we will get this equation. Using the calculator, we can find x which is 3.16 meter. Now, let us take the deflection equation and apply the value of x. We know that we should not consider this. After calculation, we will get minus 22.6232. In the question, the value of Ea is given 8000. For the maximum deflection, we will get a negative value. That means the deflection occurs downwards. We have calculated MB and RB. Now, let us find RA. For that, we are going to apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0. RA and RB are acting upwards. So, both of them are positive. These two loads are acting downwards. So, both of them are negative. In this way, we can get RA which is 15.667 kN. Let us take moment about B and to find MA. In this case, we have to use right hand side rule. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. 
let us assume that ma is acting in the anti clockwise direction so that it will be negative or a is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 6 this load is acting in the anti clockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 4 this load also is acting in the anti clockwise direction so it is also negative and the distance is 2 mb is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive finally for ma we will get a positive value that means our assumption is correct ma is acting in the anti clockwise direction now we are going to draw the shear force diagram I am going to find the shear force values from the point A and towards the point B. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Using that rule, we can find the shear force values. Here you can see the shear force diagram. Now we are going to draw the bending moment diagram. Let us use the superposition method. In this method, first we have to consider the fixed beam as a simply supported beam. You can see that I have converted the fixed beam into a simply supported beam. Let us find the reactions Ra and Rb. Let us take moment about B and find Ra. In this case, we have to use right hand side rule clockwise positive and anti clockwise negative. Ra is acting in the clockwise direction. So that it will be positive and the distance is 6. So 6 Ra. This load is acting in the anti clockwise direction. So that it will be negative and the distance is 4. This load is also acting in the anti clockwise direction. So it is also negative and the distance is 2. Finally, for Ra, we are getting 15 kN. By applying the rule, sigma v is equal to 0. We can find Rb which is 12 kN. For the simply supported beam, now let us draw the bending moment diagram. To find the bending moment in the point C, we have to multiply Ra with the distance 2. 15 into 2, we will get 30. To find the bending moment in the point D, we have to multiply Rb with the distance 12 into 2, we will get 24. Then we can connect the points. This diagram is called the free moment diagram. Now using the end moments, we can draw the end moment diagram. For MA, we have got 20 and for MB, we have got 16. Now let us combine both of the diagrams so that we will get the bending moment diagram. Alternatively, we can draw the bending moment diagram in only one step. For that, we have to find the bending moments in every point separately. To find the bending moments in the points A and C, we can use right hand side rule. Clockwise will be positive and anti clockwise will be negative. Let us find the bending moment at A. In the point A, we have MA which is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative. Let us find the bending moment in the point C. MA is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative. RA is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 2. For the bending moment at C, we are getting 11.33 kN meter. To find the bending moments in the points B and D, we can use left hand side rule clockwise will be negative and anti clockwise will be positive. Let us find the bending moment in the point B. In the point B, we have MB which is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. Let us find the bending moment in the point D. MB is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. The vertical reaction RB is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 2. Finally, for the bending moment at D, we are getting 6.67.
here you can see the bending moment diagram in these two points the bending moment becomes zero let us make sections in both of the points I have made this section at a distance of x from the point A and I have made this section at a distance of x from the point B. We know that in this section the bending moment is 0. Using the right hand side rule we can find x which is 1.27 meter. We know that in this section also the bending moment is 0. Using the left hand side rule we can find x which is 1.41 meter. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.